up guys? How you doing? My name is Mel. Welcome to Holmes Law. Today we're going to be talking about generators, okay, and how they become separately derived systems or not. Okay, so today this here is a 1000 kW generator, alright. It's a Kohler generator, as you can see. That there is the battery charger, okay. We have the load bank that's back there as well. And so basically this is what I want to show you, all right? This is the first means of disconnect for the actual generator, okay? This here would be the first disconnect. It's a 1600 amp disconnect, all right? This is the first disconnect before they actually start feeding, you know, if you wanted to shut the shut the generator down and not feed anything, this would be the main breaker for that, okay? So, if we look under here, okay we see that this is the neutral bar okay this is the neutral bar and this is my ground bar and it's being bonded okay that's the system bonding jumper there so that's actually what's making this a separately derived system in order for us to actually have this be a separately derived system we have to also use a specific transfer switch okay now what type of transfer switch I'm going to show you what type of transfer switch we're going to need to use okay and more importantly than anything it needs to be a four pole transfer switch so that you can also switch the neutral as well as the phases okay so in a bit I'm going to go and show you that transfer switch for now let me just show you a little bit around the actual generator enclosure now these here are two disconnects that are feeding the actual fire pumps okay as you see they ran wireways now this was all prefabricated from you know uh, um, the contractor that got the actual generator from Kohler okay there was a, another contractor that actually did all of this enclosure okay we just wired it so as you see there's a wire way and it's feeding these two disconnects, okay? These are actually feeding the emergency side of the fire pump through an automatic transfer switch as well as a controller, okay? This enclosure here is doing the emergency side of all the loads on the emergency circuits, okay? And this is the feed for the actual fire alarm, all right? Now with that said, I'm going to show you a little bit of the uh, what we have here. We have three breakers, one feeding the optional standby, one feeding the legally required systems, and then this one is here feeding the load bank. The emergency, I just showed you the emergency disconnect for the emergency loads. That there is the controller for the load bank, all right? And that, what you're looking at is the load bank, all right? And this here is the monstrosity of the generator. It's actually on standby and it's working. It's already ready to go. As you see here, this is the actual screen. This is the controller. It's on standby and it's ready to go. This here is the ATS, okay? This is an automatic transfer switch to one of the loads, okay? This is actually working the optional standby loads. As you can see, it's a four pole switch. Three of the phases and the neutral, okay? And that's what we have to have in order to have a generator that's gonna be bonded or, you know, separately derived and whatnot. Yup, four pole switch. Yeah, so that's that's the whole ATS there. It's also a, a um, actual bypass switch. That's why it's so big. All right, it actually has two contactors in there, one for the ATS and one for the bypass. As you can see here, transfer and bypass. It's actually feeding this load here, which is a you know two section distribution, all the optional standby loads, and. That is actual a four pole transfer switch. Now I could actually show you the actual nameplate to it as well. It's an 800 amp switch, four pole, four wire. 
so you can see it. All right, and that's what you need to have when you have a generator that's going to be a separately derived system. Now, if you didn't have a four pole switch, then you would have to unbond the generator, which would be that bracket that you saw that was bonding the neutral bar with the actual ground bar. That's what you would have to disconnect if you did not have a four pole transfer switch. All right, so that's how you take care of that. If you only have a three pole, then you unbond it and there's no problem. That's it. This here is another transfer switch. Okay. And I would have to open up these thumb screw first. Okay. There we go. Let me open up this one. And this is also doing the optional standby loads. It's also another four pole switch. Okay. As you can see, another 800 amp four wire four pole switch. Okay. We have obviously it's feeding distribution panels, so they have a neutral. Okay. Our other transfer switches do not have any loads that actually are using a neutral. So in that case, we're okay. We don't need to have a four pole switch because we don't have a neutral in that system anyway. All right, but these loads being that they are feeding panels, which is this one here, distribution panels, and they're, they're actually coming in with the neutral, then we need to actually switch that neutral. Okay? That's just another transfer switch there, bypass. And I'll talk later more about the transfer bypass uh, transfer switches a little bit. If you do want me to talk about it more and, and explain that to you and how it works, uh, just, you know, make a comment on it below and I'll make a video explaining that. It's not really much to it, you know, but um, I can explain it if you want. So this is another transfer switch, okay, bypass status as well. All right, and I'm going to show you a little bit about this one here, okay. This one here is a three-pole transfer switch, and it has a solid neutral, okay. But we don't need to worry about that in this case because this system here is going to be not, we're not using the neutral at all. So it doesn't have, it doesn't matter whether it's switched or not, okay. It's a 400 amp transfer switch, four pole, three pole, four wires, okay, uh, uh, Obviously, we don't have the neutral here, okay, and um, yeah, it's a three-phase load that we're actually feeding here, okay? This distribution panel is only feeding three-phase loads, so we don't have a neutral coming to this distribution panel. It's only feeding three-phase controllers for the elevators, okay? So we don't have to worry about the neutral being switched or not because we have no neutral in this system here. Okay, so that I hope helps you out a little bit in understanding, you know, about the ATSs and the generators and when to actually have the neutral bonded at the generator or not. Okay, um, it all depends on, you know, what the actual blueprints say or, or whether it's in the specs or not. But um, mostly all generators should be bonded, you know, um, it's just a lot safer that way. But, you know, in... in in other cases, I've also worked with some generators that weren't bonded and they just went with three pole transfer switches and whatnot. And there's weren't any problems. You just need to be a little more careful, you know? And that's it.